morning everybody. Good morning. We're off to do a little adventure. So what are we going to do Lucy? We're going to be exploring Roman London today. Yeah, there's lots of Roman London left around to go and see. We're going to go find it all. Let's see what we find. See you out in London town. <laughs> see you out there. Roman London's like quite a lot smaller than the, the London we know today. Yeah, so this is basically central London. Yeah, proper central London, the heart of London. We're looking in between the Barbican and the Tower Hill area. That's where most of your London remains are left, because that's pretty much the whole city. That's all they had. So we, we've we travelled around on Tube. I mean, it's easy to go around on the Tube on London, isn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, the Romans didn't have the Tube, but... But we have the tube. We have the tube and we're <laughs> making use of it. Yeah. Now, Roman street level is quite a lot lower than what we have today, but there are quite a lot of remains that you can see still from the street. So I thought we started to kick it off with the fort, didn't we? Yeah, which is near the Barbican Centre. Yeah, so the fort was built after, like... So you know the Boudicca Uprising? Yes. So the Boudicca Uprising was where they basically eradicated the first settlement of London. So this is, like, the second settlement of London that we're going to see now, because the first one was, like, completely destroyed. There's Gone. nothing left. Nothing left of it. So after that, they realised that defences were important, so they built this fort as part of their rebuild. So one of these big bits of fort that you can find is near the old site of the Museum of London, because they're moving for some unknown reason. <laughs> So we found it by heading on the Bastion High Walk, and yeah. then we saw like what well, was like a good view from top, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's like a good like vantage point from up there, so you can sort of see like the the battlements that are left. So that isn't fully Roman, though, yeah. is it? No, most of it is actually medieval because the medieval people just like built on top of what was there. So it's basically the foundations that are Roman. Yeah, so that's the original Roman fort, the foundations. Then you have the medieval structures that were put up on top. Like I think they added more gates and some battlements and stuff, and just like used and reduced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're just walking down to get a look at it from the road. Yeah, and there were like some little plaques scattered around which give you a bit of information about what you're looking at right here, which is quite handy to see. So these ruins sort of continue over the road? Yeah, there's one on one side of the road, like Barbican side, and then the other side of the road you can continue wandering around. This It's quite a long stretch of ruins actually. And it's really weird seeing it sort of like sandwiched between all these quite like modern high modern rises. Modern buildings. There's like huge glass buildings and like this crumbling bit of Roman medieval remains like in the middle, which is quite cool to see. And it's weird because I like, I've never seen it before. No, I've never seen it before. I can't believe how many times I've been to London and I've never seen any of the Roman stuff in London. No, neither. So this was it was quite an exploration. I mean, for someone who's been to London quite a lot, this kind of like, it made it new and exciting for me again. It was like a new bit I'd never seen before. So Noble Street is, is across the way, which is where you have the rest of this great stretch of leftover fort and wall of this side. And it is, it's actually quite impressive. Very impressive, it. yeah. I think Noble Street had better plaques as well that really helped you understand just how it would have run around the city and the forces and defences that they had in place. Yeah, they had like some nice... Well, just how it was like presented, I feel, was like nicer. Definitely. Than across the road. <laughs> yeah, well, across the road was next to a car park, so I feel like they hadn't put in as much effort. <laughs> I feel like possibly the high-rise development next to it, I wonder if they had to... Oh, I see. Like, had to have something to do yeah, with it. Yeah, maybe... Yeah put money into preserving it better or do you know what I mean yeah I feel like that's definitely a potential so it's quite a, a stretch to walk down and then from there you sort of continue on to our next on to our next trip location our next location we're starting from the fort and then we're going down the map aren't we and yeah. we're on foot because I want to see the streets I think it's quite fun <laughs> it's quite fun isn't it so we're heading towards what is the next is the London Mifreum yeah and this is in the well, today, the Bloomberg space as part of the Bloomberg HQ. Yeah, it's like their little art gallery come museum space, which houses the Temple of Mithras, which I think is one of the coolest Roman remains in London, to be honest, personally. Yeah, like, and I feel like the experience there... Pretty like, cool. It's, oh, yeah. yeah, amazing. They've put some effort into it. It's, it's very well done. So the, the Roman temple was actually found in the 1950s because it was after, like archaeological work they were doing as a result of the Blitz because this part of London was heavily bombed and it revealed yeah. some like stuff in the foundations. So they were doing a bit of ratting around and discovered this Roman temple here. 
which I wasn't known about before. That's incredible. And when they built this new development, the Bloomberg building, they like, returned it there? Yeah, so they, they, they moved the Roman Temple because this place was being built. There was new developments. And then when Bloomberg heard about the Roman Temple being on their site, they brought it back and reinstated it as it would have been from the original archaeological sketches at the same level as Roman street level would have been. Yeah, so they're like incredible. properly reinstated it. They've got this amazing wall of all the artefacts that were found during the dig, which I think was really nicely presented. There's actually like a quite an impressive array of artefacts on display. A very impressive array of artefacts. And then you've got the temple downstairs, which is a full immersive experience. They've created like this. This like is a proper art and archaeological. Yeah, plan, it's like it? a sound. It's like a visual, visual. sensory experience. <laughs> It's meant to like transport you back to like what the Roman cult people would have felt entering the temple. Yeah, it's like, it's like you're living it you're as living they it, would. Yeah. It's trying to like embody the emotion, isn't it? Because it's not just any old temple. It's a Mithraeum. So it's a temple of Mithras, which was like this all Roman male cult. Like this spooky cult they had going on. So downstairs they have like this like cool archaeological space. But then upstairs is this gallery, isn't it? Yeah, in the gallery, I think they get in different artists mm. who create a body of work inspired by... It's by like, the historic like n of surroundings of the site itself. Yeah, of the site, the artefacts, I guess whatever inspires them, and that changes regularly. But the cool thing is that the whole thing is free. Oh, completely. All you have to do is book. I mean, that's like incredible. It's like so accessible for everybody to go and see the proper history that lies beneath their feet. Yeah, I mean, if you work near it, live near it, it's definitely worth checking out. Definitely worth a trip. hundred percent worth a trip. And then we were a little bit naughty then, and then we did get on the tube, didn't we? We were, <laughs> we were running out of daylight hours, so we had to. We were. We had to rush. We had to ending. rush. Rush. So we went to go and see to see the Roman wall. You have to go to the Tower of London because that is the biggest, most substantial bit of Roman wall that's left. And it's huge. I can't believe this bigger fragment's still standing. And what I love is the red brickwork, oh, it, which yeah. is like, I think from what I know, it's almost like a level. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like Roman love engineering that. right there that you can actually physically see. And there's quite actually quite a bit of Roman wall left. There's like some little pockets and like hotel courtyards and like all over the place. But um, this is the biggest bit, and there's quite it's quite funny because where we started, Jumbo, back at the Barbican, yeah, we were on this road called London Wall Road, which is where the fort was. And London Wall Road is actually a modern road, but it can practically directly tracks the route that the wall would have encircled the city. Yeah, it in. follows it, and I kind of love that. There's these little references. I mean, I just, just love how Roman London is still nestled in like the embraces of modern, busy day London. Mm. Like like this one, the high rises are right next to this, this crumbling Roman wall. Like how cool is that? That's so cool. And you've got this little statue, well, big statue. It meant to be the Emperor Trajan, but I was reading some cool stuff about this statue. So I think it's actually like a 19th century statue that they found and just put there. <laughs> and apparently it's a different head to the body. Is it? Yeah, apparently that's what I've been reading. Oh, that's hilarious. So it's like there's a little bit of conjecture there in itself, and I think it's just so funny. The original wall would have been three miles long. I mean, that's what? quite an impressive feat, isn't it? I mean, it's not quite Hadrian's Wall. No, not quite Hadrian's Wall. <laughs> it took them ages to build as well. So they first started it in 61 AD and it was completed around like 200, 255. Like, Whoa, that's a really long time. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Three miles long, it enclosed 330 hectares of land. That was how much it enclosed. If you're liking our digging adventures, please remember to hit that subscribe button and follow our channel. The we final stop. The, fi the final stop that we do, there are... A couple of other locations that aren't open at the minute. At the minute, and some that we didn't get a chance to go around because it was a whistle stop. Yeah, it was a whistle stop exploring tour. Roman London. But we decided we had to go to Ledenham oh. Hall. Yeah, is it? 
Is it Leaden Leadenhall Market? Leadenhall Market. Because That's the one. Leadenhall Market, I actually think it might have been my favourite because of how quirky it was. Yeah. Like it was so quirky. So Leadenhall Market is actually built. It's a, it's a Victorian market, but it was actually built on the same spot as the Roman Forum and Basilica. And I think that's incredible to think that there's been trade there since Roman times. Literally since Roman times. And then when they were building Leadenhall Market in the 1880s, they discovered this like Roman foundation, was in the foundations as they were building it, which was the base of one of the basilica's large arches. And for those who don't know what a basilica is, a basilica was basically where they would have had the Roman courts, the Roman townhouse. It was like a, like a really big, important building yeah, for Roman Yeah, it's like quite London. central to quite central. Roman life. So currently, this bit of bit of Roman basilica that they found is in the basement of those hairdressers. And if you ask nicely, you can actually go and have a look at it. You can. And in fact, if you book an appointment, you can actually get your hair cut right next to it and look at it for the whole time <laughs> you're getting your hair cut with a Roman view. But we found, we went right at the end of the day. Yeah, and it was empty. It was empty, which was nice because we kind of had it to ourselves. Yeah, and they've got a nice little plaque in there which tells you all the history of the site and about how they found this bit of Roman basilica. And there's quite a nice little glass wall you can look through and see everything, isn't there? So I feel like that's a nice little hidden... Yeah, hidden Roman gem. A hidden Roman gem, which I think was genuinely my favourite thing we found. <laughs> yeah, I loved going there. Absolutely loved it. Back upstairs, we went and just checked out the market anyway. Yeah, because the basilica was right next to the forum, so the forum would have been underneath. Leadenhall Market, and then the, the base of the basilica that they found was is at the end of the market because Nich Nicholson and Griffin, that's the hairdressers. For anybody who wants to go and check out this <laughs> bit of Roman, it was um is right on the end of the of the Leadenhall Market, and so we were like wandering through this ancient site that was still being used in the same way that it would have been used. And I felt like there was just a nice way to end our tour. Oh, a, a lovely way to end the tour, especially as like pubs were opening, people were out Romaning. Well. Drinking round. Probably Roman. as they would have been in the Roman times. Oh, I'm sure times haven't changed, have they? Times no. really haven't changed. So whilst this might have been my favourite, I think there's still a few left that we really need to go and see. Yeah, the amphitheatre. And the bathhouse. And the bathhouse. And the bathhouse, I think, opens from April. So I think we're definitely going to have to do a second trip. A sequel. I we'll have to do a sequel. A sequel. Definitely or... have to do a sequel. <laughs> and we'll have to tie it in with a mudlarking trip as well. Because, I mean, we yes. can't come to London without doing a bit of mudlarking. And we might even find a bit of Roman history on the banks because Roman history always washes up on the banks well, the we have found a bit of Samian wear before we have so there's so Roman there, artefacts to be found on the Thames there literally are so I think we've got to do it got to get back out there so we've done something a little bit different today I mean we don't often do these kind of like little travel vlogs do we Lucy <laughs> no Roman well, fans branching out we're trying new things we were trying to share with you our experience in London and like all the Roman stuff that we saw because it's still history we might not have been finding things but we we're finding buildings and foundations instead we were still finding Romans <laughs> still finding Romans you could, you could put us anywhere and we'll still find Romans so you got to let us know if you loved it if you think of any other places that we should have been to that we've missed and if you check out in these places then we'd love to hear your trip so let us know if you liked our Roman adventures and if you haven't seen it already then we've done a great little adventure with Sai haven't we done a mudlark yeah and you might see some Roman finds so go and check it out if you feel inspired and want to get out digging, then we've got a 10% discount code off at LP Metal Detecting, so treat yourself to some new gear. 